With a population of over 200 million people, Nigeria has a large consumer market with one of the fastest growing economies in the world. The creative sector, which constitutes entertainment, visual arts, tourism and hospitality, amongst others, has many youth venturing into it. According to Jabberman, the creative industry has the potential to create an additional 2.7 million jobs in the next four to five years. But the United Nations Development Programme say the sector is faced with challenges such as inadequate infrastructure, limited access to funding and markets, intellectual property issues, and a debt of enabling regulations. Well, joining us in the studio is a seasoned professional in broadcast media, culture and tourism information, and social development. She is also a former Director General of the Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation, Omotaya Omotosho MFR. Good morning. Morning, good Beryl. Have you good to see you again, studio. Veronica. Same here, Ibrahim. Good to see you guys. Now, let's talk about the creative industry. And a lot of persons, experts have said that uh, Nigeria has not really, you know, unlocked its full potential when you're talking about the creative industry. And one wonders why. What are these challenges? Why? What are we not getting right, basically? Um, you're very right, uh, Veru, to say that we've not fully unlocked our potentials. And uh, with... Uh, how would I put it now? The century that we're in, 21st century, we should have gone pretty far. And we can still get there. Um, what I found intriguing is that most actors in the creative industry, they are not duly sensitized to mentoring the youths, the younger ones. Mm. And I'll tell you why. And we need that because by now we should be taking our stage we should be taking our place within the committee of nations. It bothers me when I listen to news about my country, whether I'm in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, and all I hear is negativities. And I say, what's going on? We have a lot of story to tell. We must churn out positive narratives. We must also carry along the younger ones. We must mentor them. What do I mean by this? Let's talk about the wonderful things that Bonaboy is doing. When the talk of Bonaboy was in the Caribbean island some few weeks ago to see my brother. And as soon as I got there, I said, would you imagine? They said, Bonaboy is coming to the Caribbean islands of St. Martin. And everybody is so excited. And because he's a Nigerian living there for so many years, he felt so proud that somebody is coming. It popular international artist is coming to the island and originating from Nigeria. We move from Bonaboy, we talk about uh, David Oyelowo, the BBC accredited film producer who made positive news about us in the international committee. Mm -hmm. We talk about even Moabudu. Moab had done quite a lot of work when we're talking of the film Nollywood industry. Absolutely. Which, yeah, so these are our celebrities and we want to churn out more. We must learn to celebrate our celebrities. And I'm enjoying our celebrities to also learn to develop the younger ones. There is no way we can occupy the international stage that we so desire to occupy and sustain it if we don't start deliberately mentoring the younger ones. It, very, very important. Right. The creative industry you know, transcends beyond uh, artists and yeah. some few things that you talked about. You know, can you help us provide uh, some somewhat kind of um, overview of you know, the current landscape of the creative industry in Nigeria and the opportunities that we can tap from them? Well, I, I want to start off with even the menial, tiny little ones that we overlook. The up-and-coming artist. There is a gentleman, he is Joshua Ojo. He's a, a film producer and started a few years ago. Very, very committed, very focused. He called me yesterday and told me that, Mommy, do you know that while I was trying to produce Wale Shoinka, who is an enigma, a phenomena. A lot of people have shown so much interest in this film he's doing. Do you know that within the course of my going to the field with my crew, I had a bad car accident and my legs were almost amputated and I was in the hospital for over a month? But I didn't allow that to deter me, mommy. I'm calling you to tell you that the job is done. Because mm. I've not heard from him for about one year, for about 10 months since January. I felt so elated, I felt so happy. That is the kind of gentleman, that is the kind of artist 
we should give kudos to and uphold and encourage. We move from that, we go to um, even our women under the bridge here um, at, uh, what do we call it now, where do we do the arts and crafts? Under the bridge very near here in Lagos, mm -hmm. uh, after Maryland. Maryland, yes. Thank you. They sell lots and lots of arts and crafts. When I have visitors come to Nigeria, they tell me, oh, uh, Tayo, I want to take some souvenirs yes. back. And we don't want to go to the island because most of the time I shuttle between Abuja and Lagos. I want to be in Maryland. I take them there and they buy quite a lot of... Why can't we empower all those people? Mm -hmm. I remember when my colleagues... Like Ghanaian prints and, mm -hmm. and all of these things outside mm -hmm. of the country. Exactly. Exactly. We've not been able to package our culture the way we see all these other countries. And they were it. Yes, uh, Ghana, for instance. We see South Africa as well. Mm -hmm. When you go to these countries, you, you see how they package their culture. You can feel their culture, you can see all of the beauties of, of what they represent. Mm. You can easily identify. And I'm wondering, why are we not even looking in that direction? We have so many of these things across the country. We have a diverse culture. Why are we not packaging it in such a way that we can even export it? And you mentioned people coming in to, to even visit and touch these areas. Thank you. We've not been able to do that because even the regulatory authorities in the subsectors of our tourism industry. So regulatory authorities in arts and culture, we have an agency solely for that. We have the Nigerian Tourism Corporation, a different agency. We have National Arts Gallery, a different agency. We have National Orientation, a different agency. When it comes to public speaking and all that, that is part of creativity. Mm. That's National Orientation. But there is no synergy. Oh. There must be synergy. I remember while I was in charge of tourism, Myself and minister, I went to my minister to say, my dear sister, let's go to the president. We need to let him know that we must have interministerial committee mm. that would intertwine all the relative sectors all of us have just mentioned right. in a way that such a committee will be presided over by Mr. President. And the ministers in charge of all the subsectors that make the creative industry in Nigeria will be members mm -hmm. and the private sector the hospitality, That's the right. hoteliers, mm. the arts and crafts. And we got the approval of the president at that time. And that's why they were seeing tourism, tourism, tourism all over. That they thought to the president and the government had poured money onto us, so to speak, if I could put it that way. Right. We didn't get money from government. We got some support. But private sector funded us more. Mm. Because I went from one industry to the other. I went to the bank chief executives, I went to the multinationals, I went to Mobile, I went to Chevron, I went to uh, Texaco, I went to MD First Bank, I went to MD UBA, just name it, to give them our tourism calendar mm. after we have started this interministerial. Mm. So nobody is working in isolation. I'm happy that we have a president that understands it now in the saddle. President Bola Tinobu, how did I say that? I'd worked with him when he was in Lagos State. We did quite a lot of tourism, uh, what do you call it, promotion together. That's when we started with the Black Heritage Festival mm -hmm. in Lagos State. And Akim Bajabi Amila was the commissioner for tourism under him. We did a lot, lots of visitors were coming in, trooping Femi, into Femi, Nigeria. To say, Femi, Bajabi. No, not Femi. Femi is a speaker. Oh. Right. But Femi uh, it's didn't work. Different. <laughs> exactly, it's different. Maybe they are related. Right. Well, this is Hakim. Hakim was a commissioner of tourism. That's right. Yeah, Femi is our speaker, who is now our chief of staff mm -hmm. to the president. So we did quite a lot of work together. And I could see that the governor at that time, who by God's special grace is our president today, gets it. So because he gets it, I don't have much fears for the sector anymore. What I want to say, and I want this message to be conveyed to him, is that we must revisit the establishment of the Presidential Council on Tourism, which incorporates all these galleries and all the parastatals I've mentioned, the NGA, National Gallery of Arts, the NICO, the uh, Tourism itself, NCDC, um, the uh, Museum, Commission, of, Commission for Museum and Monuments. That's another parastatal. Yeah. And so we have about eight or ten of these parastatals intertwined that must come together, their ministers and their chief executives, under the Presidential Council for Tourism Development, presided by the president. Because with that, and the private sector coming in, those of us that served government, that we're still in the industry, the hoteliers and all that, we must put our heads together, presided by the president. Where the state governors would also come and say, this is my tourism calendar. 
but I have a problem with infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The tourism site that I have or the tourism attraction, we don't have accessible site to it. And it's a federal government road project. Mm -hmm. The president will say, yeah, minister in charge of road, take note of that and report back to me in the next six months. Uh, or your state, what are the challenges we are facing? We are moving from Lagos State to Anambra. What are the challenges? Well, with the economic situation on the ground, yeah. where we have um, a death burden already, and uh, the government... Talking yes, financially. Financially. Yeah. How far can we go with all of this that you have mentioned? Veronica, we can go far. It's a good question. And I smile because I believe that the way to go is public-private sector partnership. That's mm. right. I thank God to say that that was what I pioneered for the tourism industry in year 2000 as Director General. Mm. I said it earlier on that they didn't give us enough money. Mm. But I didn't want to be explaining to Nigerians that I didn't perform because they didn't give us money. Mm. I should be able to think outside the box. And that's why I went to all these uh, captains of industry to give them my tourism calendar. I didn't go talking without documentation. documentation. So by the time I had meetings with them, they knew this lady meant business. Mm. And they supported us. They would say, Motayo, give us your tourism calendar from January to December. Let's see how many we can sponsor. Tony Elimelu did a lot for us there at UBA. Uh, Mr. John Ajeki. Uh, we, we wouldn't want to be mentioning names. Mentioning names, yes, okay. Yes. First bank, chief executives of yeah. this, of this uh, uh, what do you call it, industries. Yeah. They supported us a great deal. And so Nigerians were seeing us doing quite a lot. Even that was the time we had Miss World. If you remember, Veronica, yes. that God crowned our effort with beautiful success by giving us the most prestigious beauty pageant in the world, yeah. being Abani, won at Bani Darego. Mm. So it was so easy for us because we decided to partner together. And that was why the president was listening to us, because we didn't go asking for money. Mm. Our DGs and chief executives now, they're expecting the government to pump money, pump money. That's the point you made. The money is not there. Mm. They must think outside the box. I know President Bola Tinobu will listen to any chief executive that comes to say, sir, I have ideas of public-private sector partnership mm. for tourism development. We must occupy the global, global uh, what do you call it, uh, stage yeah. and let the international community know that we're serious. It's one thing to have um, um, a calendar. It's one thing to have a blueprint. It's another thing to be able to implement it. And after it is implemented, it's another thing for, it to, for one to follow it through to ensure that it gets to you know, logical con uh, conclusion, conclusion and where it will even have continuation. So how do you think you know, um, the government's policy will help in this regard? And how can businesses leverage the rich cultural diversity and heritage of Nigeria to you know, create unique and marketable uh, okay. um, creative products or services where they will see, yes, fine, in if we're able minute, to do it, then our time is we, up. We, we can continue. <laughs> right. Yes, because we must carry along the federal tourism associations of mm. all the states. We call them EFTAN. The EFTAN people are active members in the private sector. Mm. They are not government officials and they're doing a lot. We must carry them along. The government cannot do it alone. And in all the states and the six geopolitical zones, we have EFTAN zonal offices. And we have all those members, they already cut, uh, what do you call it, caught in the data, mm. in the database. So we shouldn't leave them. They do so much, but we don't know because we don't have the support mm. of the government. The government today is a new one. Thank God we have somebody that listens. We have somebody that gets it. The entertainment industry, the fashion industry. Mm. Talking of creativity. Right. Anytime I travel abroad, I travel this way. Come and see the way all the international foreigners, so to, so to speak, all the international people, foreigners, gag around me to say, wow, you look so beautiful. Did you bring some to sell? I love to have some. I feel so proud of my nation. I tell them, it's made in Nigeria. <laughs> I can give you contact. Sporting, sporting our fashion outside. Our fashion outside uh, and culture, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we have to leave this conversation here. Although there's so we much. don't have enough time. Yes, <laughs> very short and interesting. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. All right. And I can assure you, I'll come back again. All right. <laughs> when I have the time. We must uh, thank you, Omotayo Motashaw, seasoned professional in broadcast media, culture, tourism, information, and social development. Development, former Director General of the Nigeria Tourism Deve Development Corporation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Veronica. Thank, Thank you. you, Ibrahim. Thank you. All right.